Moose Creek is on the road. I'm in Columbia, South Carolina, and I have my best friend Jimmy Hall and my second best friend Timmy Hall behind here. And of course, Glenn, he's behind the cameras. Anyway, what we're here to talk about is let's just break everything down on when you're setting compensation and intonation. Now, when you set up a guitar, intonation is how well the guitar plays in tune on the different frets. Now, I will talk about first position, which is 1 to 5, second position, which is 5 to 7, 9, third position is 9 to 12. When I'm talking about neck relief, I am talking about the curvature that is in the neck. The neck is never straight. The neck always has a certain amount of curvature in it. When I check my neck relief, I usually go with the first fret and the 12th fret, check at the 6th fret, and I want to see about four to six thousandths off the 6th fret to the bottom of the string. Now, when I'm talking about intonation, I am talking about the actual note being played on the guitar, because we want to intonate it, which means I want to tune it so that I can get the proper notes on every fret. Now, a fretted instrument is not perfect because we're trying to match a static dimension, which is your scale length. And the scale length can be anything. But the scale length is measured from the nut to the 12th fret, multiplied times 2, and then in order to give you, you compensation for matching the working length of the string to the static dimension of the scale length, we actually move things down. Now, strings are going to change over time through what we call work hardening. So the intonation will start going out on used guitars. We've all taken a wire coat hanger and bent it and it finally just breaks. That's work hardening. Same thing happens to the string. The molecules realign and you end up with a string that doesn't have as much stretch as the day you put it on. The wound string has a solid core and it has a wrapping on it. That doesn't generally go out as fast as the solid strings. Now when we're adjusting for intonation, the first thing you want to do is set your scale length up for the length at the bridge. So I generally go from nut to 12th fret and then from the 12th fret to the 14th fret. So multiply the 12th fret times 2. I'm coming up with a dimension of, should be about 25 and a half. So right here, I place the 25 and a half at the back of the saddle slot. Now, you can move it a little bit forward or aft depending on the guitar you're building. A finger picker's action will be different than a flat picker. So if you move that 25 and a half to the front of the saddle slot, that actually places it back a little bit further. So the higher the action that you need for a flat picker, you kind of want to play it to the middle or forward into the slot. And that's what this little jig will do. It's just a simple box. The neck has been screwed on here. I put a little shim underneath the bridge so I could get the action height. And I'm using a what, I, what luthiers will call three and a, a three and two, which is actually 30 seconds, but we often measure them in 64ths. So, however you're used to doing it, we're we're going to talk in, in 30 seconds. So if I say three and a half, that is actually seven 64ths. If I say two, that's actually two. If I say uh, two, that's actually one thirty second. So does that make sense to you? Okay, so when I set my tuner up, and I'm going to set this up right to where it needs to be on this setup. So there I am at E here, E there. That's perfect. Now if I change my neck relief, and I put more neck relief in it, Right now that's flat, so that bow shortened the actual length of this string. So, I'm going to tune it up. We 
There we go. It's actually holding pretty good yet. You do have a little bit of a, a forgiveness, forgiveness factor, but you can see that's good. So that really didn't affect the E string much. There is a formula out there, you can find it, that is based on the diameter and the length of the string. So here we are on the bass E. And that's showing just a little touch on the sharp side. And that could be adjusted by taking the saddle and notching the saddle so you take the peak of the saddle and move it back which will change the actual working length or the change of the done. It will change the length of the string. That's all. Just minute changes. Now I'm going to tune that up here and now I'm going to change it again and now I'm taking neck relief out. And if you make a little bit of a little rig like this you can sit here and just grab yourself a beer or a cup of tea and play with it and start making these little adjustments. Now when I change that, that changed that note rather significantly. We're almost a half a note different. So I'll tune that back in. And there, at that setting, the bass C is perfect. So you can see by playing with the neck relief and how that neck goes up and down and your action height up and down. And here's the other thing where a lot of people will get confused. They'll make an adjustment in the neck relief and it will change the action height a little bit because think of it this way. The nut, the headstock comes up and down. So when I measure that now, my focus. Oh, there. There's my machine scale. My me pulling the neck relief out, I've now changed the base E from three to two and a half. So it actually pulled the action height down to 64. So you can see how these adjustments will play up here. So get your neck relief where you want it. And if you want to get a good gauge of it, if you put a under string load, first and twelfth fret. So you fret the 13th and you'd fret the 1st and you'd want to be about 4 thousandths off of the top of the 6th fret. That's about as simple as I can tell you how to do this. And when you do down here and play with the intonation, you can check the, in, uh, the compensation on the saddle. So the two compensations that we're talking about is compensation of the length and the compensation here at the saddle, which is actually adjusting the string length in relationship to the static dimension of the scale length. So I hope that makes sense to you, but it is well worth the investment of time to rigging one of these up and just play with it because you can really understand how you make adjustments because if you adjust it, you'll know if you have a higher action where you need to adjust your saddle's compensation. So I hope that works for you. From Columbia, South Carolina, and my friend Jimmy and Timmy, and my friend Glenn behind the camera, from our shop to yours, stay safe. Thank you.